Hello, Skylar Thomas here in Aptos, California. Why am I here? Supposedly we have all kinds of white sharks hanging out around the old concrete ship. So, I'm trying to see them from the drone, but it's gray, it's choppy. The chances of seeing them from above are a little low. The chances of seeing them from my paddleboard are even lower, but I'm gonna try anyway. But that's not what this video is about. With Shark Week right around the corner, I thought I'd put out a little hype video of my own, and it's called Top Close Calls that weren't actually close calls. What does that mean? Well, keep watching. Okay, just in case some white sharks go underneath, I'll put a camera on the bottom of the board. Maybe we'll get something. Probably not, but why not? Okay, number one on my list. Everyone loves a feel-good story about an animal coming to a human's rescue, especially if it's an animal like a marine mammal, a dolphin, or a whale. And these stories are great, these stories are fun. The problem is that when they're fake stories, they also tend to negatively teach people things that simply aren't true about animals and their natural behavior in a habitat, particularly when it comes to sharks. And although there are many examples, I'm gonna focus on this most recent story about a humpback whale, and I'm focusing on it because one, I have had a similar encounter with humpback whales and my personal experience is proof that this behavior doesn't mean the whale is rescuing someone from a shark. Two, there isn't a shark in the footage. Three, just because you get in the ocean at the same time that a whale and a shark are in the ocean doesn't mean that everything's priority suddenly is about you. And four, and maybe what bothers me the most is that there is a whale researcher in this film who is sadly because she's in a position of influence making this matter worse because people are more likely to listen to her and she is just plain wrong. You can see how many media outlets picked this story up and then other people tried to do their own knockoffs of it and just look at the thumbnails and you can see how bad this got. I mean one has a whale shark does that mean that the whale shark is the aggressor or the savior here? Because it's a shark, but it's the size of a whale, and does the editor even know the difference? If you don't know the story, these people were diving around humpback whales, and the humpback whales took interest, particular interest, in the researcher, and she was lucky enough to even get picked up on the whale's back. And I guess it was realized that there was a shark in the area and maybe there was maybe there wasn't we never see a shark we in one version are shown something blurry that may or may not have been a shark you know like what's this thumbnail mean is that supposed to be indicating the presence of the shark but it doesn't matter if there was a shark there to assume that because you're in the water when a whale and a shark are in the water and a whale is playing with you means that it's saving you from a shark is a huge leap and bound and attributing characteristics and behavior and even an agenda to an animal that is completely unfounded. Here's a taste of Animal Planet's drama. But this whale isn't respecting Nan's personal space. After briefly surfacing, he turns toward Nan and starts to approach. It's a never before seen behavior that's both fascinating and frightening. Well, that's a lie immediately. Many people have experienced this, including myself. I mentioned that I never saw a shark and they said it was a tiger shark and I want to point out that in one version of the story that was done by Animal Planet they went so far as to go out and get other licensed footage of a tiger shark from somewhere else and add it to the story let me repeat this tiger shark was not there this is a different location so yes, as part of the storytelling process, that enhances it, but it also misleads people who don't realize that that is common in reproducing a story. Once again, let me clarify that there could have been a shark there, and more importantly, let me clarify that it doesn't matter. 
There were sharks when I went diving with the whales. There are sharks in the ocean. There are so many reasons that any species of animal might be in the same area that you're in when you happen to decide to get in the ocean that it's not even worth counting them all. What matters here is our arrogance at thinking that because you got in the ocean and other animals were there, everything that they were doing was about you. Of course, in this case, the whales acting interested in the person does inflate our egos or at least indicate that it was about us. Remember, these are highly sentient, very intelligent animals. So for them to take an interest in something as foreign as us coming into their world really isn't very strange. And it's really exciting. I really enjoyed my experience when they paid attention to me. But I'm kind of disappointed in this researcher to make such a big assumption. It's not her fault that the media then took it even further, but even she doesn't claim that the shark even swam at her. So this makes a huge assumption on what the tiger shark's intentions were just by the fact that it was in the water, while also dismissing all the other possible reasons that the whale might have wanted to interact. So to say that this is a close call, you know, it probably doesn't even belong in my list, except that these stories claim that the whale saved the person from the shark. So it's important to me to point out how misleading these sorts of stories are. Let's jump back to a couple of months ago because if we're going to say that this whale was saving a human from a little tiger shark, why was it that when Ocean Ramsey was in the water with this gigantic bus sized great white and there were dolphins there, that the story was about humans harassing the shark, not about these dolphins saving the human from this Jaws-sized shark. I guess it's just how the media wants to play the story and get the most views, but it's really up to the public to figure out for themselves what's really happening. Which leads us to our honorable mention in this category. Honorable mention on this list is this guy who says there is no doubt in his mind that these dolphins were saving him from the great hammerhead shark. Well, I have had plenty of time in the water with the great hammerheads and they not only are shy, but don't ever seem like they're going to hurt you. And three, there is no record of a hammerhead ever eating a human being. Ever, ever, ever. In his story, because there was a hammerhead there, and dolphins there, and himself there, that the dolphins were saving him from the shark. These are dolphins having a good time, entertaining themselves. They are marine mammals. They're like us. Sometimes they find entertainment in strange ways, just like we do. The fact that you were in the water and witnessed it does not mean that it was about you. There's no question in my mind that those dolphins intervened to protect me. Nice touch with the music. Bonus alert, bonus alert, new evidence of this video being BS. When I was about to publish this, I realized that the guy said that it was an Atlantic hammerhead and I said it was a great hammerhead. And when I went back to review, I realized that that first one is not a great hammerhead. In fact, it doesn't even appear to be in the same location. But later on, it is a great hammerhead. But suddenly we are in clear blue water with a sandy bottom. The water changes, the bottom of the ocean changes, and the species of the shark changes. Okay, so that's a bunch of crap spliced together to tell a fake story. Conveniently, comments are disabled for this video. The one line summary takeaway today is that shark presence does not equal shark threat which explains how I was able to paddleboard around this shipwreck where supposedly a bunch of great whites have shown up recently and there are sea lions and harbor seals here, all kinds of things to stimulate the sharks and I saw nothing and experienced nothing. Wow, I complained about that fake story for a long time. You ready to go to shore, Wolf Bear? We'll come back out to continue the countdown, but I think that's enough for this particular episode. In the spirit of Shark Week, tune back in because I'm going to release a bunch of these. Let me know if you agree with my assessment of these clips or if you saw some things that you think I might have missed.
for those of you who are still watching and who are sticklers for detail, let me go over a few finer points. Sharks have been known to follow migrating whales that are pregnant so that they can take advantage of the afterbirth when the baby whale is born and some of that soft early skin starts to uh, flake off of the baby whales and also sometimes the baby whales don't survive and that corpse once it is left behind is a pretty great feeding opportunity. That explains why a shark might be hanging out in the area of a whale. It does not mean that you are going to be killed by mistake. The more I look at that footage of the tiger shark cutting across the surface with his dorsal fin out, the more suspicious it looks. Does anyone else think that that's actually a tiger shark on a fishing line being drugged? For those of you curious about the locations of these shots, I was in the Kingdom of Tonga when I was with the humpback whales and the other story was the Cook Islands. My tiger shark and hammerhead shark footage are from the Bahamas. Yes, there are sharks in Tonga. We tried to see some. Unfortunately, their numbers are not doing well. They are heavily fished outside of that area and the numbers just don't seem to be able to keep up. I'm still crossing my fingers that the Kingdom of Tonga does not open up their migrating whales to whaling. Yes, that's really my humpback whale footage, and yes, it's one of the best things that's ever happened to me.